Where in West Michigan is a bride supposed to find her wedding dress? That's next. Hey everyone, Russ Climby, Tiberius Images, and I'm excited that you're joining me for another episode of Interviews with Event Professionals. And today I'm introducing you to Emily, who is the general manager of Renee Austin Wedding here in Grand Rapids. Renee Austin Wedding is a bridal store boutique that offers dresses, accessories, and a whole bunch of different services for their customers. And I highly recommend you go check out their new space. They've been there for a few months on the north side of Grand Rapids. And be sure to check out the links below. You're gonna hear all kinds of stories today about how wedding dresses end up in their store, how Emily ended up actually in the wedding industry, and a lot more. So hopefully you enjoy. And just so you guys know, Emily is the manager over at Renee Austin. Is it Renee Austin Boutique, Renee Austin Bridal? Like Renee Austin Wedding. Wedding, that's mm -hmm. right, okay. Yeah. And uh, it's been you guys have been in business for 10 years, I believe. Almost. Almost 10 years yeah, now. Yeah, and you're one years. of the one of the premier, you know, bridal shops mm -hmm. in the West Michigan mm -hmm. area, which is great. And why I wanted to have you on the show. And so I'm super excited to be able to hear some of the things that make you guys different and just what it's like to be in the like you guys are definitely in the thick of the wedding world because you're sure. you're one of like you're like the key moment of decision making mm -hmm. for every bride, which is mm -hmm. just got to be I'm sure you've got great stories and terrible stories, and hopefully we can get into some of the great ones. Way more great stories than yeah, terrible stories. Yeah, that's awesome. Great. So, but how did you end up working, you know, because you're the manager at the mm -hmm. store, how did you end up in the world of wedding dresses? How does that, how does that come to pass as a, as a woman in West Michigan? Uh, my mother brainwashed me. Oh, she did? Yeah, she did. Um, I've always had an interest in kind of art and drawing and fashion, and so age 9, 10, she started bringing home bridal magazines for me to draw from. Um, my first job at 16 was to more or less vacuum the floors in a bridal shop that was local to my hometown. And when that closed, I kind of kept the interest. Three years down the road, walked into Maggie's store and said, hey, I want to work here. And set up an indie group from there and I haven't left. So you literally just walked in the door? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so all of you young people <laughs> that are wondering, how do I get a job at the place I want to work at? Mm -hmm. Literally, take a lesson from her, you just walk in, you be mm -hmm. nice, right? Mm -hmm. You probably were well dressed. Dress up a little bit, yep, yeah. Exactly, and then and and ask for yeah. the sale. Yeah, and, you and say I love the store. I want to work here. And you probably didn't start off like being manager full time right away, no, right? So no. You, how does that process? Um, work? I started as a part time college student, uh, okay. working while I was in school, and started kind of picking up some momentum with sales and everything. And um, around time of starting graduation, Maggie was you know, able to offer me a full-time position as manager at the store. That's awesome. And um, you've been there how long now? Six years. Six years. So you've yeah. been there more than half the lifespan of the business. Yes. So yes. when people walk in the doors, they're going to see you. Generally, yes. Excellent. Excellent. So what does it look like, like being in the, in the bridal world, having dresses as your, you know, the, the item that you're selling, what does that look like on a day-to-day -day basis? And what does it look like kind of as you plan out a year for your business? Day to day is a lot of kind of consultants taking appointments. We are all by appointment only, so we kind of get a good look at what each day is going to be for the week ahead of time. Um, I have a really phenomenal sales staff right now that generally takes up the front of the store. Um, so most of those appointments are taken by our staff now. Okay. Um, and then some of us are in the back room processing all those orders that are coming in. Okay. So I get kind of the joy of opening all the boxes that have our bride's dresses that were ordered you know, four or five, six months prior and kind of getting to call them and say, hey, guess what? Your dress is here. Um, kind of all that exciting news. So we kind of call it Christmas when we get a big delivery. I can imagine you guys having like a, <laughs> a like an unboxing like yes. video. That Literally, you, like, yeah. Do you guys shoot videos and like send them to the bride? We or? do the little um, boomerangs. Okay. Yeah, which is a lot of fun, kind of popping boxes. Um, but it's really quite a production, usually one or two days a week. There's a few of us in the back just literally opening 10, 15, 20 boxes full of new dresses or you know special orders for our brides um, where then we call them and set up their appointments to come in and try on their dress. So there's a lot of that kind of exciting Christmas is coming feeling sure. where um, people are really happy to be there. Um, we, you know, weekends are always the busiest. So, cause that's when most people are available, but we offer evening hours, those book up really quickly. Um, and then you have kind of your day-to-day -day business of you know, hey, guess what, guys? We're going to mop the floor today. <laughs> we Wait, need it to, needs to be clean. We, need to clean. Uh, we try to keep it spotless. We're I pretty bet. proud of our new yeah. space. Um, you know, it was designed specifically for us. So it's really nice. 
So we get to mop, we clean the bathrooms, um, mirrors have to be cleaned all the time. Which is what the part-time <laughs> college students probably do, like what you used to do when you were first in the oh, business. Oh, I still do it. You, oh, okay. I okay. still do it. Look at that, the manager's <laughs> leading the way, right? It's, it's important to me and I think important to my staff for them to see that, um, you know, hey guys, if we're cleaning toilets today, I'm right there with them. Yeah, for sure. So, so that's day to day. What does it look like seasonality wise? Like I'm sure you've got busy season and slow season. So talk to me. About I thought that. we did. <laughs> um, really thought we did. You know, obviously so many weddings now have gone from June was the most popular month to June, July. Now it's really almost end of April all the way through the end of October. Mm-hmm. That is, I guess, considered the busy wedding season. Um, what that did to us as a business really is that all year is pretty busy for us. Um, Slowest might be end of June for ordering, but then we have all the pickups and bridesmaids picking up and fittings and things like that. So two to three years ago, you know, we had a slow month or two, and now we're still pretty steady all year round. For sure. So what what does it look like when you're looking at your business as as a wedding retailer? Like, how do you... Do you sit down? Or is that part of your job? It might be Maggie's job as, as the owner, um, but I just don't know what your day-to-day responsibilities are. Are you actually trying to project out and do marketing and all that kind of stuff, or are you managing staff in the building? Both. You're doing both. I, okay. guess, I guess it's kind of everything. You know, sometimes if there is an extra appointment that booked during the week, that's something that I will take. I'll work directly with the bride. Okay. You know, I'm on the team placing orders. I'm opening boxes. Um, you know, for me personally, too, sometimes I'm putting out fires for brides that are worried or anything like that. Um, so that's kind of specifically my responsibility is to, you know, if something comes up, then, you know, the girls bring it to me and I handle that. Um, but really, I guess we all kind of do everything all day, every all day. day. All day. It's kind of whatever's needed. Um, uh, you know, as far as I have one girl who specifically focuses on placing orders and another of that does all of our thank yous, our resident calligrapher, Eliza. You have a resident calligrapher? We're, we're, we're working on like promoting that a little bit more. Yes. But I have a very talented um, staff member who is on our sales team, and she also does phenomenal calligraphy, kind of as who a hobby. Thought, right? Who would have thought? <laughs> so uh, we get to send out you know, a really nice looking thank you and everything to all of our brides. Yeah, I might have to call you after that. It, like, I mean... <laughs> yeah. Give her some more work. For sure, for sure. Um, <laughs> You know, so all of our girls kind of have their uh, niche that they work in. Mm-hmm. Um, and for me, it's kind of overseeing and making sure that the things that are coming in are exactly as we ordered and, you know, making sure that everybody's happy with her dress. For sure. You want to make sure everybody's happy, right? right. Always. You guys are in this moment yeah. of, like, joy-filled anticipation yeah. for, for a yeah. bride and, a, and the bridesmaids mm-hmm. and that type of stuff. So yeah. who are your favorite clients to work with? You know, if, if I said to you, if I asked you, okay, you get a, I'm going to give you 100 clients, mm-hmm. but you have to tell me what they're going to be like and maybe a little bit about them who would those what type of person would that be for me personally i really enjoy the girls that come in and say hey i want something that's not a traditional gown okay um that's really fun for me because being a little more art focused myself it's it's cool to get creative for them um and i enjoy saying okay you know what is traditional to you what is what makes something different um and as a boutique we make a a really big kind of push and effort to have things that aren't necessarily your typical gowns you know you can't find them anywhere um so that gives us a little leg up on those brides that are like hey you know i want to feel like a bride but this is my style so kind of matching up a bride that has a specific style to a wedding dress that suits her that she never could have even imagined Mm -hmm. it's probably my favorite client when they say hey i want something different sure and then lots of question asking, because mm-hmm. like you said, I mean, I oh, think yeah. that's, as you say that, it makes me think, right, someone can make that statement, but it doesn't mean it's what you think. So right. you need to really dig right. into that and be good at asking questions. Yeah, as so, staff. so when we do a bridal appointment, what we do is we have um, that bride and usually a couple of her guests come in, we sit down with them, we spend the first 10 to 15 minutes actually of our appointments kind of interviewing them and saying, hey, tell us about you, tell us about your wedding, tell us about who you're marrying. Um, we always get out the good old Pinterest at that point. Yeah. You know, they show us what they're looking for, <laughs> which is... It, they do that to you as well. Oh, like, for sure. They do that for us. For sure. Well. Can I send you my wedding boards for the photos that I'd like? Yeah. And we get brides that like, email us their boards before they come in for their appointment. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Is that a challenge in your industry or is it... Both. 
<laughs> so, so there are good things to it because yeah. it's a visual representation oh, of yeah. their style. Yeah. But it's also... It can be a little challenging um, just because some of those gowns are straight off of the big runways out of Paris and Milan, um, which isn't necessarily something that matches the demographics of like Grand Rapids in the Midwest area. So those types of things are kind of, you know, taking what they're showing me, whether they're, you know, really expensive couture gowns and then saying, okay, I love this idea, but I want something that's wearable for me, mm -hmm. as well as, you know, being super respectful of their price points. So we kind of sit down and kind of hash all that out, say, you know, what kind of color palettes you like, what's your overall style, whether it's that, you know, rustic, shabby chic, or kind of that industrial or very glamorous, and kind of go off of that and some ideas that they have, things that they think they look good in. And pull dresses from them accordingly. Gotcha. And then do, you, do they just kind of wander around the space and pull stuff out? Or how does that work? We don't. Store? We don't. The front of our store is a showroom. So when girls walk in, that's the first thing that they see. Um, some girls will walk through the racks a little bit while they're waiting for their appointment to start if they're early. But otherwise, what we do is when we have them seated and do that little bit of an interview and consultation with them, then we like to go pull the dresses. Um, the main reasons that we do that is to kind of keep them in the scope of what they're wanting to try. Make sure that they don't exhaust themselves by trying 20, 30 dresses. Wait, you mean people can get tired? Women can get it, tired trying? We all 30? get tired. We get, like, <laughs> it's a workout trying on all those dresses. I bet. Um, and then also, you know, making sure that they are looking at things that are options for them, whether it's the amount of time that they have to order a dress or the budget that they want to stay in. Gotcha. So talk to me a little bit about the, the wedding dress world that you play in. Like, Cause obviously you're a retailer and you are representing mm -hmm. brands and specific, yep. specific um, designers. designers that mm -hmm. you are purchasing from. So like, how does that process work? Like how does the dress even up, end up? I'd love to, like, that's very interesting to me. Like, cause you've got, so you've got X designer in your yeah. store, but uh -huh. you probably met them six months or two years prior and they're making things mm -hmm. for you. So talk to me a little bit about that. So a bride can understand how a dress even ends up there. So, Long story short, that's another big part of the behind the scenes work where um, twice a year I go with an assistant or Maggie and I have met up to go to market in Chicago um, and it's at the Merchandise Mart and literally it's this giant, almost like fair like market feel where you go to generally right now the way we're established with our designers, we go and visit them. Okay. You know, we see their runway shows, we get to look at all their dresses on their mannequins and pick out the next season worth of dresses. Um, we haven't picked up really many new designers recently because we've kind of curated a very special um, you know, collection for the brides that we work with um, and things that suit our area but still have that unique boutique feel. Sure. Um, so really markets actually probably the highlight of my year. That's great. Now so that so I get the, to, it's like a runway world for you yeah, that you dreamed about yeah, as a 10 year old kid. Kind of. That's awesome. <laughs> so you get to go in and, and really, you know, meet the designers, talk to the reps. You know, we have people now that we've been working with since close to the start of the store um, that, you know, recognize us and, you know, hey, I talk to you on the phone twice a week sort of thing and get to meet in person. Um, so when I go to market in March, I'm buying for fall. And then when I go to market in September, I'm buying for spring. And is that normal in the in overall wedding world? Like, so it, just it, so a bride understands, yeah. like, this is kind of how the world operates. Right. Yep. It's, I would say it's even normal for fashion. You know, okay. if you pick up a fashion magazine or anything, um, you know, their fall collection might, you know, be out in June. And they're sure. showing that. So girls can be like, hey, you know, this is what's going to be trending sure. for fall. Yeah. So which it's means kind of if it, it's published in June, right. which means it was like, photographed in March, which means it was actually shown in December, yeah. Yeah. which means it was designed literally a year, year ahead in advance. of time. Okay. Yeah, and the nice thing about Bridal is that, you know, every season there's something new that's introduced, but then we also see things that were new before being perfected, mm -hmm. um, and then you still get those really classic looks. So slowly trends kind of morph, but in the Bridal world it's, you know, there are definitely trends, but they're a little more subtle. Sure. Versus... Plaid was really in this last fall for regular fashion. Right. And hopefully it's not this next. So talk to me about some of the trends that you are seeing right now in the world of bridal fashion. So the trend right now is to not be trendy. It's kind of, all those all those brides that really are looking for something that's not quite your typical gown, but what is viewed as a typical gown is almost, you know, a couple of years past. Um, there are so many different variations of what's available now that it's almost like to each their own, where you actually get to choose something reflective of your style. Okay. We have gowns that are completely clean, beautiful silk and Georgette fabrics. 
with clean lines, and then you still have all those romantic lace gowns. Um, the thing I started to notice a lot kind of coming into trend for bridal the last season was really kind of layered skirts and okay. a lot more sparkle. More sparkle. More okay. sparkle. Interesting. You didn't know that that was possible. But a yeah, I mean, I've been photographing <laughs> weddings 13 years, and I remember a time where it was all sparkle all yeah. the time. But yeah. it's come, it's back. Yeah. And, and there's more. Oh. There's even more. Even more in all different forms. Colors are really kind of evening out and being trendy. Girls are really comfortable now wearing colors of champagne and blush and even some grays and lavenders. Really? Okay. Um, versus necessarily just white or ivory. Um and you know, a couple of years ago it was all lace. You know, all you yes. could find was lace. Yes. And now we've got a really great mix of we still have those beautiful lace gowns, but also some spin offs and then some clean styles too. So is that a reflection of say the wedding um uh the design world just having more capacity to do more variations? Or is that just a like a bunch of independent folks have popped up and they're just doing a whole bunch of new stuff. Like, cause obviously the bridal world has been around a long time. Right. And right. now you're saying that the world of bridal dresses is like continuing to vary more and more and more. For sure. Does that mean that there's just new people jumping into that market space? I think there are definitely some new people. Um, we actually picked up one new collection this last year that um, we're doing a trunk show with right now that have that really clean look okay. because that's coming into style quite a bit more. Um, but I would say even in the last couple of years that I've been doing some of the buying, the designers that we've carried for, you know, the last seven, eight years are expanding within their own collections. Okay. So where they used to be like, here's an entire spring collection of all lace. Now we see some slim lace gowns, but we also see some very sparkly ball gowns. You know, they're offering more variation inside of the collections too. Gotcha. Interesting. Interesting. So... The best thing about your industry is what? What is the best thing about your industry? Besides potentially medical, I think it's probably one of the most rewarding industries that there are. You know, when you get to work one-on-one -on -one with a client or even, you know, with their venue or other vendors, that person is, you know, it's probably one of the most memorable days of their life. Mm -hmm. They're looking forward to it. And I think that, you know, being part of the industry, they treat us accordingly. It's kind of that idea of like, well, we're in customer service, but not really. You know, we end up really having a partnership with our brides for the duration of their engagement. Most brides, you know, looking for their dresses, one of the first things that they do, a lot of them will book their venue and then come straight kind of to us. So it's, it's literally this idea of, hey, yes, you're coming in to find your dress today, but we're spending time together, whether it's, you know, just exciting, hey, your dress is in, or uh, you want to show grandma, you know, all those exciting moments, we're doing it together. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, we get kind of emotionally attached to some of our girls and then getting pictures after. And um, I had a, a girl a couple weeks ago come in with a sister and you know, this is my bride from five years ago and she's got a baby. So I think it's, you know, the idea of like, okay, you don't just you know, have a regular customer that you shall sell shoes to over and over or a car or anything like that, you know, they're coming back to you because you have that connection. Yeah, just like... In, so in that huge moment in their life. With their little sister mm -hmm. and a baby. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or a third sister where you yeah. helped the first two, you know, help find their dresses too. Yeah. So it's, it's really probably the relationships and the way people, you know, depend on us. Yeah. So how do you build relationships? Like what makes you guys unique compared to, you know... Obviously, folks can go buy a dress on Amazon if they want. Oh, please want. don't do that. I'm not, te I'm not telling you. I'm not telling you to go do that. I'm just saying they could. They could. The option is there. Yeah. So, so they'll go do that, and then they'll um, come to us with yeah. their disaster story. Yeah. Um, I think that you know one of the things that makes us really unique is hands down customer service. I don't know if it's because we started with such you know kind of a young small staff, but if you look through our reviews and everything, really what sets us apart is that. Customer service is our number one priority. Um, you know, those brides not only should not only feel special while they're there in their appointment, they are special to us. So it's not just like, oh, I'm giving you good customer service and smiling at you because I'm expected to give customer service. It's because, you know, the staff that we have really does actually care about how they feel that day. So I think it's, you know, the sincerity that's there and, you know, our, you know, integrity in helping them through the whole process. Um, but it's, Customer service, hands down, is kind of what I'd say is the basis of the store. 
Interesting. Yeah, no, I, I would definitely say, you know, in my years of, of knowing your store and your, your staff, you guys have definitely, you've always gone above and beyond. It's mm-hmm. always been great to know that a bride that we're photographing has gotten their dress from, from your space mm-hmm. because I know that it's going to look great. It's, you know, mm-hmm. fitted properly, all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. So what are the biggest challenges in the industry that you, you're a part of right now? There are all sorts of challenges <laughs> for everyone everywhere. Um, and really it's, you're going to come back to that customer service and those relationships because that can either make those challenges challenging but fun mm. and have huge victories and successes or it can kind of tear them apart. Challenges are, you know, kind of making sure that the entire family dynamic is working in favor of the bride. And, and not, you know, not just saying like, you know, make sure that the mom's happy too, but just making sure that everyone there is having a good time and a good experience because that is part of what will make the bride have a good experience. If her whole group that's there is having a great time, she's going to relax and enjoy picking out a dress. Mm-hmm. Um, major challenges that we see on a weekly basis are, are really just, you know, what a bride's looking for compared to, you know, what she's willing to spend or the time that she has. Mm-hmm. You know, sometimes a girl is falling in love with a picture off of our website, um, but it's a little bit over her budget. And then she has to decide, you know, okay, does she want to look for something similar that she's comfortable buying? Or does she have to say, nope, that's what I need and I'll find, you know, find the funds for it. Sure. Um, the other challenge that we run into, especially this time of year, is timing. We get a lot of fall weddings where girls start shopping for their dresses in June. Um, with a yeah. Four, yeah, with a four to six month shift time, you know, we have to kind of get creative and see, you know, what can our designers provide, and they're very willing to work with us on. Um, or, you know, we host kind of fun sample sale events a few times a year where girls can come right in and buy off the rack. So those are kind of your daily, like, okay. You know, how do I sometimes creatively get the bride what she wants within the parameters of what works for her? Sure. So you're, you're a consultant and you're, you're really helping them walk through the process. You're mm-hmm. helping them ask the questions and answer the questions that they don't even know to ask. Right, right. So what are the questions that you get asked over and over again? Like, I, I always like asking vendors that because yeah. I feel like you're going to get asked it a hundred times in the next year. So let's, let's have you air them out right now. <laughs> Because we know you're going to ask them and then answer them so that they can be informed right. when they do call you. Right. So those questions are going to have a lot of flexibility. The main ones are kind of what I just hit on. It's like, okay, well, you know, moms will call in, schedule the appointment for their daughter. They're so excited. Well, what do your dresses cost? Basic question, right? And, and it's, It um, seems like a basic yeah, question. Yeah, it's super basic. And, you know, part of when we schedule that appointment is that we ask, what are you comfortable spending? Mm. You know, where do you want to be? It's a, it's so important to us as a store to be respectful of that and not sure. show them things that are over their budget. Sure. Um, so, that, what you're, so what you're saying is when people walk in the door or first contact yeah. you, it's okay to be honest about what they have to spend, whether please, that's $100 please or 10000 like, Yeah. Be open, be honest, because yeah. then you can make sure to respect where they're at and not try to sell, exactly. them, sell them something 10 times. Because I think a lot of people are worried about For sure. what am I going to be sold if I have a $1,000 budget? Are they going to try to sell me a $10,000 whatever? I right. Mean, it yeah. comes from the world of sales, unfortunately. Yep. But It sure does. And that's, you know, again, something that sets us apart as a store is that, you know, hey, you say I have a $1,000 budget. I say, great, let's, let's use your budget appropriately sure. so that you still get what you want. But, you know, if you show a girl who has a $1,000 budget, a $1,500 budget, a $2,500 dress, she's going to probably love it. But then the entire experience is ruined because Mm -hmm. she feels either guilty that she has decided to spend the money Mm -hmm. or she can't get it. So that's why we don't recommend going over budget and those types of things. Yeah, because you've just shown her something she absolutely is in love with, but now she is in this conundrum. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes it's, you know, hey, you give me a budget. And I'm going to show you what what works for that. Mm-hmm. And if you say, well, this is what I want instead, I'm, I can show it to you. Interesting, okay. So, um, so cost is one of the questions that yeah, you asked. Yeah, yeah, you know, what do they cost? And, and for us, we have such a wide range. Um, realistically, I have dresses you can special order starting at seven to $800, all the way up to about 4,500 right now. Gotcha. So there's really, I would say, something for everyone. Sure. In the store. Yeah, especially like bridal magazines these days. I mean, I think I, I, I look through Pinterest and I see some yeah. of the stories that are out mm-hmm. there from brides, and people are spending two, three, four, five thousand, twenty thousand dollars on a dress, which yeah. is 
that's might be great in that specific instance, mm-hmm. but at the end of the day, it's you know, again, what does the bride have in her budget, and right. what does she dream of as a dress, and yeah. how do you match that together? Because it might be a thousand dollar dress is the best option for her, even if she's got a two thousand dollar budget. Is that a true exactly. statement? Exactly. Yeah, for okay. sure, for sure. Actually, that happened the other day. The mom kept asking me, you know, every dress she came on. Well, how much does that cost? Finally, I just said, you know, I'm going to promise you that every single thing I've, you know, pulled for your daughter is within the budget that you guys told me. And, you know, the bride very happily, you know, walked out with um, not only a dress, but all of her accessories for within the budget that she wanted to spend. Wow, that's great. So it's, you know, we don't want to only show you things that are at your budget we want to keep you under so that you have everything you need yeah i mean no one ever gets upset when you help them not spend all the money they were planning on spending (laughs) go take that money and go do something else yeah yeah or you know remind them hey alterations cost something sure stuff like that so talking about alterations i'm sure that that's a world i know literally nothing about so how does that are tricky tricky okay they're tricky um we have a couple of really phenomenal people in the area that we partner with Okay. We do not provide alterations in the store. Some places do. Sure. Um, you know, we try to avoid that just because, you know, we recommend people based on their reputation and their excellent work. Right. You have a relationship. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And then, you know, what we kind of do from that is say, you know, hey, bride, you know, you bought your dress from us. These are the people we recommend for you, mm-hmm. but you don't have to use them if you know someone else. Um, and we're always here to help, you know, if something goes awry, then, you know, call us, yeah. we'll help you with it. But then they pay that seamstress that we're recommending directly for only what they're having done. Interesting. Yeah. The best, the best story I've seen about, uh, that we've experienced with mm-hmm. alterations was a bride that bought a dress somewhere else in Grand Rapids, yep. but they somehow met and had a seamstress, not at the store, but they found somebody that was mm-hmm. fantastic and they had a full length gown, mm-hmm. um, with a train and somehow they had. So this is an idea for you, all you brides. Somehow they figured out how to actually cut the dress like above the knee and still have it like double-sided taped on there so that when she was married, it looked like a it was a full dress. dress. And then the, when they walked into the reception, he, the groom, the husband, grabbed the bottom of the dress and spun her out on the dance floor. <laughs> and the bottom of the dress came off. Doesn't that happen in some sort of Disney movie? I have no... Maybe. I think it does. It might. And maybe that's the idea. But it was just like, I literally was standing there photographing yeah. so I'm like... What just What's happened? Because we didn't really, they didn't tell yeah. us. We had no idea. Yeah. But afterwards, obviously, I asked questions about it and emailed the bride afterwards. Like, yeah. who did your alterations? Because yeah. this is crazy. So there's definitely creative things that people can do when For it comes sure. to a dress. And what, have you seen a lot of creative stuff like that done before in the past? Like, is that part of your story as a, as a business? I would say, yeah. Um, you know, being a boutique with a pretty talented staff who partners with talented seamstresses. Sure. Anytime a bride says, oh, well, I want this, but I haven't been able to find it, sometimes they would say, you know, you're right, because it doesn't exist. Interesting. But yeah. let's see if there's a way we can creatively make it happen. Okay. A lot of times, and something that's a trend right now, is those girls, you know, say, hey, you know, I would love the idea of a ball gown, but I don't want to wear that all night. So kind of a similar situation where our designers are putting out now what we're calling overskirts. And so you put a ball gown style overskirt that sits right at the waist like a belt over a slimmer gown huh. so that then kind of like how he ripped off the bottom of her dress you could actually just remove the overskirt and have a slim gown for your interesting i'll be we'll have to you have to send some photos over of yeah. showing that this is yeah. included in the yeah. in the links below mm-hmm. but that's fantastic so what uh so cost you get asked a lot mm-hmm. other things you get asked a lot i mean i'm assuming alterations and yeah. accessories alterations be... time frame oh, time frame. I, okay. I feel like cost and time frame which are those two biggest challenges yeah. that we look at all the time are, are usually the two main questions gotcha. that brides and their family ask us as well. Okay. How much time do I need? How much time do I have? And um, how much do they cost? Sure. Are really pretty basic questions. Yeah. Um, once we kind of get past those hurdles with them and get them into a, hey, I can have something that I love, then all those little things like, you know, I shouldn't say little, alterations, things like that, that we're there right. to help them with, are more manageable. Sure. Those details. What questions do you wish brides or mothers of the bride would ask when they call first reach out to you? What questions should they ask but they just don't know because they're not in the industry? It's a really good question. I feel like we end up covering a lot of the need to knows in that first consultation when we sit down with our brides. Um, but I guess I wish that some people knew further ahead what those 
answers are, like time frame. You know, some magazines say, hey, start looking for your dress eight months before your wedding. Whereas I go, hey, please order your dress 10 months to a year before your wedding if you can. Um, so details like that where, you know, they come in already having not known and then you pass those deadlines. Interesting. Um, or things like expectations for bridesmaids. Those are big questions too that come in, okay, you know, I have found my dress, I'm so happy, I want to come back and do bridesmaids. Now what? And, it, you know, doing the mix and match kind of brides don't know what to expect when they do that. Mm. Kind of collecting their girls, usually from out of town. Um, there's no real way to say, hey, you should know this when you come in. Because that's our job is really sure. to kind of walk them through all of those processes. Um, you know, I think that girls are asking the right questions when they come in. And we're just, you know, providing the best answers that we have. Awesome. Awesome. So what, uh, what are the best things, best, uh, you know, what are you excited most about for the next year, two years, five years being in this industry for a handful of years already? Where, where do you think Renee Austin goes? Where do you think the wedding industry goes? The wedding industry is going to be pretty unpredictable just because everybody's kind of getting their feet in and saying, you know, we've got glam brides, we've got boho brides, we've got all these different trends happening and they're all available now. Um, a little more locally, I absolutely love what's happening to Grand Rapids specifically because it's become a wedding city. Mm -hmm. There are all these really cool kind of offbeat venues that are popping up. Um, you know, we've got some bridal shops that are all really different from each other. Sure. So, you know, I think that as a town, we have all of these phenomenal vendors that you can literally come to Grand Rapids even as a destination and have it all. Take care to have it taken care of. Yeah, like exactly. People would go yeah. to have a beach wedding in Florida or the Caribbean. Yeah. Or Hawaii, where mm -hmm. they're that they can come to Grand Rapids and and have, have it everything all here. you need. Interesting. Um, so I think that's really cool. There's you know just new venues. I think there's a new one going in around the corner from us too. A lot of things that are all inclusive, where they have their planners already there for you. Right. Um, and I just kind of see this area growing. You know, new young florists are coming into town and photographers and. Um, just there's so many options now that a wedding really is now a statement of who you are as a person sure. rather and who you are as a couple too, yeah. rather than just, oh, we're going to walk down the aisle at the church and then we're going to, you know, get married, um, you know, in this one type of venue. Right. So there's opportunities and options really for everyone. And I think that that's drawing a lot of, you know, brides from out of town, but also kind of building a centralized wedding industry inside of Grand Rapids. Yeah, for sure. I definitely would agree with you that mm -hmm. weddings today are much more, even compared to 10 years ago when we were shooting weddings, it's it's a reflection of who the bride mm -hmm. and groom are as a couple, and then you're they're inviting their friends and family mm -hmm. to be a part of that story. Mm -hmm. And I, we really appreciate, I, I appreciate that, because I think about us, we got married, you know, 15 years ago, mm -hmm. and it, you know, our wedding day, we say, was it was a combination of what my parents wanted, what my in-laws wanted, to kind of smash them together <laughs> and get a day. Yeah. Whereas now there's so much more individualized, you know, I, I don't know if it's just information and resources, and hopefully that might be, it might Pinterest. be. Pinterest. Pinterest, yes. Pinterest is the reason that everything is growing in the wedding industry. Um, but, uh, but no, I think there's just people are, are taking it upon themselves mm -hmm. to really individualize what they're doing, mm -hmm. so... So where can people find you online? Where, where do they find Renee Austin Weddings online? Is it just... ReneeAustinWedding.com. Are you guys on social at all? We are, yeah. Where, where's your most active social channel? Facebook. Facebook. For sure. And Instagram. Instagram's Instagram. kind of really creeping up there. Is it? Um, I expect to take over here in the next couple months. There you go. Instagram. So we will include links to all of that down below. Definitely. And how far in advance? So if people want to schedule a consultation, like... Is email typically, like for us, we have 90% mm -hmm. of our brides mm -hmm. will email first and mm -hmm. then say, can we say, is that how it works for you guys? There's actually a form on our website Perfect. where you can directly contact us and and, and send us a message that way. Okay. But uh, you can also schedule from our website. Oh, okay. So you can go to the calendar and if the schedule has all been updated and entered, which is part <laughs> of my job. So if it's uh, not, we know who so to it's talk not, to. call me. Yeah. Um, then that'll show all the availability, all the openings in the schedule. Um, if you're not seeing what you're looking for, always call us. Call. You know, we, we have someone at the desk most of the time. Yeah. Leave a message if someone doesn't pick up um, who can just schedule it directly right. for you. Yeah, and in my head, I, I, we work with a lot of brides from out of town, and I just picture them coming to Grand Rapids for something for like five days, and they know they only have those five days right. of availability, yeah. and they have you don't they don't see any. I'm sure that you'd be like, yeah, feel we'll, we'll yeah, add another we'll, staff member, yeah. and you can come in at such and such a time. 
So. We, we definitely, you know, do what we can to kind of fit in all those out-of-town brides. Our weekends book up pretty quickly. Um, oh, but yeah. but what we've done, you know, is in the last couple of years, we've added Sundays. Oh, wow. So we yeah. offer, you know, Saturdays, but also Sundays okay. for four hours. Um, that that helps a lot of those out-of-town brides and evenings. So it's kind of, yeah. you know, it's it's hard to not be able to find an opening unless you're calling day after yeah. day before. Yeah, well, it, that just means that you guys are being innovative in the wedding world that's been typically nine to five traditional retail hours for a long time. Right, And right. so you guys are definitely doing something yeah. different, which is great. Hey, so. some of our brides work nine to five too. Yeah, that's that's how, that's how we look at it too. Like yeah. we know wedding couples, if they're getting married a year from now, they're gonna work nine to five somewhere. Yeah, and so we're meeting with them in the evening. It's, mm -hmm. it's been normal for us, but the retail world, is it's not normal for them yet. So no, you guys yet. are setting the trend and maybe a whole bunch of people will follow suit, but if not, you're benefiting from it. For sure, which is for great. sure, yeah. Those, those evenings were open till eight o'clock and you know that Sunday noon to four are some of our prime spots. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here. Yeah. I really appreciate it. It was enjoyable. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Check them out online. Go to the information below just to see what they do, who they are. And if you need to schedule something, we'll make sure to include links to the calendar. Thanks so much. Enjoy. Thank you.